Hi everyone and welcome once again to my video blog. Um, so today I'm going to talk about perhaps a controversial topic and I have a feeling that maybe uh, some of you will get offended. If you do get offended, try to take what I say with a grain of salt, I guess. And uh, yeah, before I begin, I'm going to give you some updates. Um, Aaron and I will be leaving for Toronto on Sunday, and we're going to be having a vacation there for a week and a half. And then on August 11th, I will be having my much expected breast augmentation surgery. Uh, it's starting to be a little bit stressful, but uh, hopefully everything will go well. I hope the results are good and uh, that the recovery is not too difficult. Apart from that, I forgot to tell you guys that uh, Aaron bought me some uh, tickets to the Lady Gaga Monster Ball concert for my birthday. Uh, we went to see it together and I thought it was quite good. It was very the theatrical. There were a lot of costume changes, um, stage changes. Uh, there was even a giant uh, monster puppet animated by several people at some point. Uh, and I thought she she was very dynamic. You know, she knew how to work how to work the crowd. Um, apart from that, I've been very busy at school. Uh, I've been TAing course this semester, and I've had to teach the course in question for a week. Um, it's been a good learning experience, I think, but I'm kind of glad it's over because that will give me more time to actually work on my research. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Um, now for today's topic. Well, today's topic is, again, about gender and the brain and, uh, you know, People in the trans community and in the gay community sometimes like to say that, you know, trans people and gay people have absolutely nothing in common, you know, apart from the, the fact that we kind of live the same discrimination. I think that might not actually be true, you know, I think that from a biological standpoint, homosexuality and transsexuality might actually have some things in common, and that they might both be, uh, you know, abnormal differentiations of the brain when uh, gender differentiation occurs in the womb, for example. Um, I'm actually going to point to uh, to some examples. I mean, there, there are some gay people, for example, uh, some gay men, who I think, you know, Fundamentally speaking, the only thing that really defines a gay man is that it's a man attracted to other men. So, fundamentally speaking, homosexuality is only uh, a sexual orientation. But I think, you know, a lot of gay men have a something that seems like intrinsically feminine about them, you know, in, in their way of moving, in their way of talking, in their way of thinking creatively, you know, you, you just have this feeling that these people have some intrinsically feminine qualities about them that, you know, regular straight men generally don't have. And I think the same thing can be said about lesbians. You know, I think if you observe a lot of lesbians, uh, you'll find that many of them have some qualities that seem intrinsically masculine about them. It's not just their sexual orientation, you know, there's a lot of lesbians who dress in a very masculine way act in a very masculine way, uh, live their sexuality, you know, in a masculine way in a sense, you know, like to have sex with a lot of people, no strings attached, etc., etc. And there's even some, some lesbians, you know, who identify as uh, what is commonly, commonly known as stone butch. So a stone butch lesbian is a lesbian that likes to be referred to by masculine pronouns and is sometimes uncomfortable with her own genitalia, you know, and to me, you know, there's kind of a resemblance, you know, if you think about a stone butch, it kind of reminds you of uh, a female to male transsexual, and in the same way, I think some gay people can be reminiscent 
of uh, male to female transsexuals. Like if you watch YouTube videos a lot, maybe you know this blogger called uh, Johnny Boy XO. Um, he defines himself as a gay male, and if you watch his videos, you'll see that he's always dressed um, in female clothes. He wears makeup. He does his hair in a feminine way. He talks with um, a very feminine intonation and has apparently had a breast augmentation and talks about how as a kid he used to play with Barbies. And I, I watched his video and I, I read about all those things and I was just, you know, starting to question myself, you know, is this person really a gay man or is it a male to female transsexual? And you know, maybe you'll think it's unfair to try to apply labels like that to other people. You know, in a sense, people are all free to define themselves as whatever they want to be. But I think that, you know, this kind of illustrates my point in a sense that the gay community and the trans community are not as apart as we might think they are. And I think the reason for that is probably because, like I said, homosexuality might be in men, for example, homosexuality might be caused by a partial feminization of the brain. You know, transsexuals like to say, uh, male to female transsexuals like to say, you know, I have a woman's brain and a man's body. And that's because probably in our brain there's a part somewhere that tells us, you know, I am a woman. And this is the part of our brain that, you know, controls gender identity. So, to be a transsexual, you need to have this part of the brain that uh, to be a male to female transsexual you need to have the, the gender identity part of your brain feminized, you know, like in a female configuration. And to be a gay man, perhaps what you need to have is the sexual orientation part of your brain in a female configuration. But I think there's going to be some overlap there because if we assume that our brain is made of many different subcomponents, you know, that do many different things, and that a lot of these components have a more masculine and a more feminine configuration, and possibly other atypical configurations, then if our brains become partially feminized in the womb as male to female transsexuals, we might have the gender identity part of our brain feminized, but we might also have some other parts, you know, for example, uh, I think that among male to female transsexuals you will find that there are a lot more male to female transsexuals that are attracted to men than among, you know, the general male population. So this would tend to indicate that possibly, you know, when, when you have uh, this part of your brain feminized that controls your gender identity, other parts of your brain, for example, might tend to become feminized along with it. And I think when uh, gay men might have this this sexual orientation part of their brain feminized in the womb, and it's, perhaps it's actually exactly the same thing that's happening to transsexuals that's happening to them. They get one part of their brain feminized and possibly other parts along with it. And this could lead to there being people, you know, with many different parts of their brain in different, you know, masculine or feminine configurations. And I think it's it's perfectly possible to imagine, you know, um, that there might be women with some parts of their brain, you know, that that do things that aren't real, aren't linked to gender identity and aren't linked to sexual orientation in a male configuration, and vice versa. There might be men who have uh, some parts of their brain that control, you know, I don't know what kind of foods they're interested into that are in a female configuration. So this would kind of tend to go with this, this general belief, I think, that people in the LGBT community have that gender is kind of a spectrum, you know. Many people can have their brains partially feminized or partially masculinized. And I think most people, you know, most men will have their brains, I don't know, 95, 98% masculinized, and most women will have their brains mostly feminized. But it's probably pretty unlikely that any given person has 100% of their brain, you know, for example, in a feminized configuration or 100% masculinized, you know. Most people are probably somewhere on the spectrum that's not completely at one end or completely at the other. 
And in the same way, I think that, you know, maybe transsexuals tend to be kind of in the middle. You know, when I think of myself and I think of how masculine or feminine my personality is, I think that I definitely have a female gender identity. But I think I have perhaps a fairly masculine personality, you know. There's definitely some traits in my personality that, you know, people would consider typically masculine. I'm a very driven, motivated person. I think I'm fairly competitive. Um, you know, I want to succeed. I want to prove that I'm good at what I do. Uh, things like that, you know, which are perhaps more masculine traits, you know. Um, so what, what would this say about me? You know, it would say that perhaps my brain is not exactly, you know, a woman's brain and a man's body. Perhaps my brain is just somewhere in between in this spectrum, you know. And what you minimally need to be a transsexual is to have this one part of your brain in the gender, the gender identity part to be in a configuration that's opposite, you know, to your, your physical body. And, uh, well, I think, you know, it's pretty common also that you'll find transsexuals who have, you know, some feminine body characteristics as well, you know. Um, I mean, the difference that we draw between transsexual people and intersex people is that intersex people have clearly visible difference in their genitalia. But, you know, I think it happens fairly often for male to female transsexuals, you know, for example, that they actually have a fairly feminine physique before they even start any hormones, you know. I have seen transsexuals whose bodies are actually, you know, surprisingly feminine looking and who can pass without ever really needing hormones. You know, if, if you've heard of Nikki Aragus in the news, uh, there is a video of her available from way back then, before she even started the hormones, and she already looks, you know, 100% passable. And I think if you look in the gay community, once again, you know, I have a lesbian friend online on the internet who looks extremely masculine physically, you know. I think if, if you shaved her hair off, you know, the, most people would think it's a man. It's, uh, it's really quite striking, and, and in fact, when my girlfriend saw this person's Facebook profile, she, you know, she asked me, is she, is she a transsexual, you know? And I think that, you know, this, this once again demonstrates that perhaps gay people and trans people are biologically more similar than we, than we think, you know? Perhaps gay people, just like trans people, are the result of unexpected gender differentiation in the womb that partially affects, you know, their body and their brain in unexpected ways. And for gay people, you know, a gay man could have his brain entirely feminized except that his gender identity would be male. And a transsexual, you know, could have minimally only the gender identity uh, part of their brain non-congruent with, with the rest of their body, you know. And that, that would be the difference. The difference would be in what parts of your brain are gender non-conforming, so to speak. Um, so that's pretty much what I had to say about this topic. Again, I really hope that people don't feel offended by what I have to say, you know. I don't mean to say that gay people and trans people are the same. I don't mean to say that if you're a gay man, you should transition or anything like that. I don't mean to say that trans women are not real women or anything like that. I just like to think about these things and I think that it's actually important to understand the causes of our our differences because if we understand the causes, you know, then we might better be able to understand ourselves in the end and better be able, you know, to treat our conditions. And uh, yeah, so that's it for today, people. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you have any comments, feel free to... Uh, to post a video response. I actually encourage you to post a video response if you have a lot of things to say. Uh, otherwise, feel free to post a comment on the video. That's it for today, people. Bye-bye.